want to I want to draw something here to illustrate something. And I'm not a good artist either. <coughs> I try to draw this best I can. Two. That's probably hard. Let me make it so you can really better understand. I live in Texas, by the way. <laughs> the map of the United States is over here. But I draw this because I want you to remember. I'm going to relate a lot of things to things that you understand and see uh, common everyday experiences. But I want you to remember one thing. If you can take nothing else out of this school, pressure is always trying to equalize itself. Uh, you think about that, and what does that have to do with my industry? Almost everything you guys do is has to do with the fact that pressure is trying to equalize itself. I don't care if it's a water pump, a sewage pump, a hydraulic pump, a vacuum pump, or whatever, but pressure is trying to equalize itself. I live down here in Texas. We get these, uh, you ever see the weatherman talking about a front? We got a high pressure here, a low pressure area here, <coughs> front's moving through. You know, the pressure is trying to equalize itself. It's the same thing that happens in a hurricane. Uh, we'll get into that a little bit later when we talk about cyclones. But pressure is trying to find a way to equalize itself, and we take advantage of that fact with the, the, with the sewer cleaners, vacuum. I don't like I say every, everything that you do somehow or another is being uh, relates to pressure trying to equalize itself. And I want to do a little demonstration to show you what I'm talking about. This little this little pump here, you can probably see it in the back better uh, on video. In the front you can see it all right. Is a little vacuum pressure type pump. It has a little diaphragm in it that produces the vacuum. Uh, it only moves three quarters of a cubic foot per minute. About this much air is all it moves per minute. It's on vacuum. It will produce 22 inches of mercury. Uh, we'll get into what that means in a few minutes. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna first take the pressure side, which is this side of the vacuum pump. Uh, this is the vacuum side. And I've got the, the, the vacuum side just going to air and I'm gonna put a balloon on it pressure side. Now what I'm going to do is turn it on and remember that I am using the pressure side. Now I inflated that balloon. Now to what pressure? I don't, I don't know. It's irrelevant really. I inflated that balloon. I inflated it, but I did what relative to atmospheric pressure in this room? What is this? It's a high pressure area, isn't it? Inside of this. Kind of like on the map. So I've got a high pressure area here. And why is the balloon uh, inflated to this diameter? Well, because it's, that air pressure inside is trying to get out, it's trying to equalize itself, isn't it? So it really didn't do any work, but it did what it was intended to do. It inflated the balloon, didn't it? The pressure. But I'm going to take that balloon and I'm going to put it in this jar. I, I use a lot of jars and stuff. It's, I mean, you just can't run to Home Depot and buy the stuff that you need to do this presentation. You've got to make all the stuff. I don't, know, I don't think you can. Then I'm going to hook the vacuum side up to this jar. Now when I turn this balloon on, balloon, the, the uh, vacuum pump on, I'm going to decrease the air pressure in here. Now what does that, that kind of relate to in, in a vacuum truck? Taking air out of the tank, doesn't it? So if I decrease the air pressure inside this jar, what's going to happen to that balloon? It's going to get bigger. What's that, what did you say? It's going to get bigger. Or smaller. It says smaller. He said bigger. She said bigger. So I heard it. You said big, bigger. Right, let's just do a show of hands. How many think it's going to get bigger? Raise your hand. Okay. How many think it's going to get smaller? You got a few, few. I got some people who aren't thinking anything this early in the morning. <laughs> you know, so let's just, let's just turn it on for sleep. Okay. Well, I'm going to turn it on for a second. Right now, it's just the air is going in. Pressure is trying to equalize itself. Where's the air going? It's going right here in here. Out through the vacuum pump. So really, I'm just moving air through this way at this point, aren't I? Just going I'm not really. I haven't created a low pressure area. So I'm going to create a low pressure area by stopping this side up. Plug it up. You hear? You hear the, the, the jar pressure just just cured itself. You hear it? You see what's happening? Does that show up on the video? Yeah. Well, it's pretty simple. I mean, it's not it's not any magic to it. But that's what happens now. In a vacuum truck, what are we doing? We're doing the same thing. But we use a centrifugal fan also sometimes. We use big, big PD blowers. This is neither one. There's more than one way to produce a vacuum. You can do it with 
Rotary siding fans, you can do it with centrifugal fans, you can do it with rotary load blowers. This happens to be just a, a vacuum, uh, just a little diaphragm vacuum pump. 